Well, good morning. Uh, we're very grateful here to have uh, Stuart Williams, uh, founder of uh, Impact uh, In Place Impact. Uh, we are really excited to be hearing a little bit more about what does it mean uh, to uh, make a profit while doing good. Uh, and so this is an offering from the uh, South Carolina International Trade Coalition, uh, hosted here at the Baker School of Business. Uh, it's a podcast series. We hope that you'll enjoy it. So, uh, Stuart, um, you have a great deal of experience in wealth uh, and beyond wealth creation. Uh, so if you could tell us a little bit about impact economics and then how I might actually relate to international trade. Sure. Well, thank you for inviting me to start with. It's nice to be at the Citadel. Um, so impact economics really focuses on how do we build a, an economic ecosystem that is inclusive of all stakeholders in a community. And so it starts at the community level, but of course it expands out both to entire nations and then the global um, citizenry as a whole. And when we look at impact economics, what we're looking for is how do we ensure that economic wins, so increases in velocity of capital for one stakeholder segment of the community, actually then benefits all stakeholder segments of the community. And it's not left to happen chance that it happens. So can you bring this down a little bit to the level of a company who wants to do business internationally? Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about import, export, we're talking about not just the responsibility of a company, but what should they be looking for? What, what are the things that would really help them be part of the success, but also at the same time, part of building and empowering those communities? So I think we have to start by, by realizing that if you're a corporation that wants to do business overseas, whether it's import or export, you are part of an incredibly complex system. It doesn't begin and end with you receiving orders from overseas and shipping your, 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 your goods or vice versa. Um, because everything that you do affects the system in both places that you're doing business with. So if, you, so if you're acquiring goods from abroad and they're being shipped to the US or you're manufacturing here and shipping abroad, that system is joined. And so it's not just a matter of saying, well, I'm company A and I'm going to source my widgets from company B that happens to be in a different country. That company B in that country is part of a complex ecosystem of its own in that country. Your company A that's sourcing the widgets, let's say it's the United States, you're part of a complex ecosystem in the United States. And when you put the two ecosystems together, it becomes even more complex. And so what corporations should do, in my opinion, is look at that system and say, I understand that it benefits me in America if I source my widgets from Honduras because I can buy them cheaper and I can have a bigger profit margin. Right? Or I can buy them cheaper and therefore the final product that I'm selling to the consumer, I can charge them less. And that's, that's very simplified for this side of the equation. Now on the other side of the equation, what impact is the company you're sourcing from having on its own economic ecosystem? And truly can I, as someone that actually by acquiring those widgets from Honduras, I'm actually helping to increase the velocity of capital in that part of Honduras. I'm having, I'm, I'm, I'm increasing economic activity, but am I also doing it in a way that's good for that ecosystem? Meaning, am I sourcing from a company that actually cares about its community as my company may care about its own community in the United States? And it's not too difficult today to do that research, to find out if the company I'm partnering with is a good actor or a bad actor. And if they're a bad actor, you're actually contributing to uh, really the defamation of that economic system in that country. And you are actually contributing to its downfall. 
so, so, so to bring this back to the level of the firm, so if the firm should be looking at the kind of impact that they have um, and working to elevate, is that correct? So what kind of role do they really play? So a lot of people would say, you know, it's the policies of a country, it's the tariffs, it's the way in which we play the game. And like you might have used the word good actors and bad actors and a lot of figure pointing. So, so let's bring it back to a person, again, a company, and it doesn't have to be a large corporation. Mm -hmm. The three ends of the world are very mammoth in size. So let's bring it back to a more smaller firm. Somebody's trying to sell a, a boat component, for example. Mm -hmm. So let's bring that down to that level. Yeah, so, so it doesn't matter how big or small a company is, right? Let's just take the United States, because that's where we are. There are plus or minus 16 million registered companies in the United States. Between them, they employ plus or minus 125 million people. They touch every single community in America. They obviously touch our environment. And it doesn't matter if it's big or small, the cumulative decisions that are made by those 16 million leaders, if it's a CEO of a big company or if it's a, an individual entrepreneur, those decisions have an effect not only on our economic system in the United States, but it has an effect on our social and our environmental system. Today's modern business leaders actually are the most important people in the room when we talk about sustainability. Uh, most people will point to sort of not-for-profits or government agencies and say, without them, you can't build a sustainable future. I, I, I take huge issue with that. I think that's completely wrong. I think that today's modern business leader, because of the statistics I just gave you, can have such a huge positive impact on both economic, social, and environmental, that just taking the time to put a bit more thought into where do I get things from? Why do I get things from there? How am I treating my employees? How am I uh, treating the community that surrounds me? Am I building a, a sustainable supply chain? What, what are my contributions to the environment? Those are the things that will have the most positive impact on America and, and, and the same in any other countries where you have an economic ecosystem that's based upon trade and commerce. And so it doesn't matter if you're a one person organization or it doesn't matter if you're Amazon, it's just taking the time to step back and think through the fact that you do have stakeholders, not just financial shareholders. There's nothing wrong with making money. I mean, capitalism is actually a good thing. Now, there are bad parts of it. And what the impact economics does is it carries forward the best of capitalism. It leaves the worst behind. And, and we fill in the blanks as need be as we go along, dependent upon part of the country you're in, kind of industry that you're servicing, et cetera, et cetera. But today's modern business leaders are the new most important people in the room. They are going to be the ones that are going to drive this country forward. Uh, if we're talking about Honduras, the, 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 our counterparts in Honduras would do the same thing. And when you're talking about international trade, it's important to know that you're part of a very complex ecosystem. And decisions that you make will have an effect both at home and abroad. So for example, I think we would all like to see more jobs come back to America. One of the things that we're going to have to swallow hard um, in order to do that is that the cost of the things that we buy is going to go up. Right? You, you, you cannot pay people $3 an hour in one part of the world to make something or $20 an hour in another part of the world and not have things go up in price. And so there's a balance. There's always a trade balance. And I think we've lost a little bit of sight of that, you know, because on one hand, we've got people running around saying, bring every job back to the United States. And I understand that. And I, I think that's, you know, that's a very laudable thing. But <clears throat> the reality is, if you do that, we'll be paying three or four times more for the goods and products that we buy as consumers. Now, maybe it doesn't become so tangible at that stage. So what's the balance? Also, the world is connected, whether we like it or not. We're part of a global ecosystem. 
And so what we decide to do here, if we're dealing with people from abroad, has an impact there and vice versa. And if we're not prepared to sit back and think, well, what is that impact? And how can we help each other? Then I think we have a problem. Mm. Insightful. Uh, you know, I, I wondered, so using the premise of, of your thesis, which is uh, making a profit while doing a public good or doing good while making a profit, what is that one indicator, if I could call it, for a company that they should use as a benchmark of, that will guide them as they make decisions? Yeah, that's a, I think that's a very difficult uh, question to answer because I don't think there's just one benchmark. It depends what industry you're in. So let's look at, let's look at it uh, from about 8,000 feet first. And so you have companies today who are in industries that are detrimental to people or to the environment or to both. However, the way that they treat their stakeholders, so their employees, the community that surrounds them, et cetera, et cetera, is remarkable. I mean, they really go out of their way to do that. Um, maybe part of that is to balance the fact that they know they're having an adverse effect on people or the planet, right? Um, there are then companies today, believe it or not, whose products or services have a huge positive impact on people or the environment, but the way they treat their stakeholders is appalling. And then of course you have companies who um, have products and services detrimental to, to people and planet, and they also treat their stakeholders poorly. And then you have companies who have products and services that are positive impact to people and planet, and they treat their stakeholders. So, you know, it really depends where you are. Now, now it's nobody's fault that we have oil companies and we have coal companies, right? Um, and they played an incredible role in building the economy that we see today. I mean, in fact, without you know the extraction age of fossil fuels, America wouldn't be where it, where it is today. So you can't just knock that out of hand and say, well, it's all bad, right? But the decision-making process for, for someone in that industry would be a little bit different than the decision-making process for someone that maybe is in renew the renewable energy space. I think what it, becomes, if what it comes down to is in terms of impacting all stakeholders, right? What are you trying to do? Yes, you want to keep your financial shareholders happy. We all know that's important. Yes, you want to make as much money as you can. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I, I, I'm certainly not one of those people that says, you know, you should cap profits. And I, that, that's, that's the wrong thing to do. I, I don't believe you should make as much money as you can, knowingly at the expense of humans or the environment. Uh, I, I happen to know you can make more money by driving positive impact to humans and the environment. Uh, so when you, when you bring all that together, if you can list your stakeholders at large as well, so yes, of course, you can say the community that surrounds my business, okay, well, that's fantastic. But you're doing business abroad. We're talking about trade, right? So you're, you have stakeholders now in Honduras. So what are you doing for those stakeholders? And vice versa. And so I think what we need to really look at is inclusion. I keep coming back to this, right? Are you being inclusive? Are you being inclusive of all your stakeholders or just some of them? Are you being inclusive of people in general? Are you being inclusive of the environment? And if you do that, you can absolutely sit and you can put benchmarks within your organization to track how you're doing. Um, and what we have discovered is that the people that are the most inclusive, the companies that are the most inclusive, lo and behold, make the most money. Oh, great, very insightful. Uh, I really appreciate you coming here today to tell us a little bit about uh, impact economics. Uh, on behalf of the South Carolina International Trade Coalition, thank you very much for joining us on this little podcast. Uh, and uh, we hope that you will join us on our future offerings. Uh, and uh, on behalf also of the host of Baker School of Business at the Citadel, have a very good day.